Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your May 2018 general readings. Thank you so much for joining us here today and welcome to any newcomers. As always, thank you for all your likes, shares, subscribes and for taking the time to send in all your support, feedback and comments. Always appreciated. And a thank you as well to all of my clients out there, both regular and new clients, for keeping me so busy and occupied with personal readings. And if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me and you haven't read with me before or you've forgotten the information, you can get more information on my contact details by going to my YouTube channel and clicking on the About button or you can look at the description bar of all the videos that I post. Uh, you'll see more information there. I do a wide variety of readings, uh, love and romance of course, uh, compatibility charting for couples, reconciliation potentials, career work and finance spreads, uh, channeled messages from past on loved ones, and I also do six and twelve month overviews uh, which look at all the energies coming in the, all the main areas of your life over a six or twelve month period of time depending on how far out you want to look. So if you're interested in any of those, you can send me an email at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to work with you. Uh, turnaround time for readings is pretty fast because I do readings full time, five to six days a week. It is what I do. So I can usually get back to you with uh, initial information uh, within the first day or the first 24 hours of uh, your initial reaching out and uh, scheduling can be anywhere from a few days upwards of two weeks but almost always within a two week period of time we can set something up for you live or recorded so if you're interested contact me we'll go from there for fast questions to uh, quick easy uh, fast answers to quick easy questions you can also find me on the smartphone app instant go under Irish Gypsy and that links also with the rest of my info. So let's move right into this. This is for the water sign of Pisces uh, for the month of May 2018. Our lovely mercurial watery fish. Let's see what's in store for you for May. Make sure to watch your raising and your moon sign videos too if you know them and if you can. They can give you additional insight and clarification. They just may play out a little more predictably for you sometimes in your primary sun sign. Uh, because there's so many of you watching, of course, in general readings, the details and specifics of how it resonates is going to vary from person to person, although the energy and advice always remains the same. All right, Pisces, May 2018. We begin with the Hanging Man, followed by the Ace of Swords. We have the Fool, my favorite card followed by the Two of Wands, the Chariot, followed by the Magician, wow, powerful combination, and the King of Cups, followed by the High Priestess, and from the bottom of the deck, your overall energy and focus and guidance for the month of May 2018 is the Eight of Pentacles. Pisces, you have a lot of major arcana cards, one, two, three, four, five major arcana cards out of nine. So potentially a pretty significant profound month potentially. Typically when um, a lot of major arcana cards show up in a spread or in a specific area of your life that we're dealing with, it usually represents, uh, because major arcana energy is, is profound, God, spirit, your angels and guides, it usually represents that in that spread or in that area of your life there will be significant life shifts and changes or the opportunity for significant life shifts and changes. Uh, and it definitely looks like May uh, is holding that for you. A lot of potential for life shifts and changes, but it actually looks like uh, at least the first half of the month you spend some time thinking about this. And it looks like you're thinking about maybe starting out on a new path that for some of you could have something to do with work, career, money, a project, whatever you do day to day or something you've been investing a lot of yourself into. You may be, some of you may be contemplating making a pretty significant change or changing your long-term goals or changing the path you're going to get to long-term goals if not long-term goals entirely. Meaning that, okay, this is what I've been working for or putting energy into uh, for all this time. Uh, do I need to change path or am I just giving up those 
previous goals and choosing some different ones. Your overall energy and focus, your crowning card from the bottom of the, of the deck, is the Eight of Pentacles. I traditionally call this, you know, the Worker Bee card. Pentacles is Earth energy, and in the tarot, this usually uh, represents or manifests in the era of our life that deals with tangible things, earth energy things. Often it's things we can see and touch and feel like money, finances, property, real estate, job, etc. Or tangible results from the efforts we put into something, uh, which this man in this card is obviously doing and we're already at an eight here, tens representing completion. Uh, he's worked long and hard to build up a good, solid, stable foundation for himself. Uh, he's hard at work on the Eighth Pentacle, putting just as much attention and detail in it as he has to the Seven above him. So there's something that he's been working at, investing in, uh, you know, putting a lot of himself into a dream, a goal, a vision of some kind. It can represent working a lot, maybe working a lot of overtime, getting up early, staying up late, could be burning the candles at both ends. Uh, it can represent repetitive work too. Um, something that you've just been doing for quite some time. Now this can be an actual job, like you know your traditional go clock in, clock out kind of job. It could be a project that you've been putting a lot into, or just you know even for stay-at-home people, this could be just what you're doing. Uh, this this card represents what you do in your day-to-day -day life to keep your day-to-day -day life going. Uh, yeah, and it can represent doing that for a long time or putting a lot of work or effort into a job or a project or your day-to-day -day life. So that's kind of the area, the focus, the energy for the month of May 2018 uh, for a lot of you Pisces. And it looks like you have a new idea or a shift in perspective about what you're doing, what you've been doing, and considering maybe stepping off the beaten path, taking a risk, doing something different, or changing your long-term goals or vision or how you're going to get there, which is what looks like the first how the energy of the first half of the month is kind of all about, um, more of an inner contemplative thinking about it kind of thing. Uh, maybe having some conversations about it. We begin with the Hanging Man and the Ace of Swords. I am recording these in the last week of April. So some of you, this could be beginning, you know, during the last part of April or something that you've been thinking about for a while and is just now becoming more active for you. Time, as I always say, is, is usually pretty fluid. The Hanging Man is a card of, it can represent feeling like you're in stasis or limbo, uh, uh, but it's really about taking a step back, not being all that active in the time frame that this represents, which is temporary, it's transitional time. He's not going to be hanging upside down for forever, but he's not really struggling either. This can be a card of withdrawing from conflict or taking a step back and watching to see how things play out or making, it can also represent making a decision or a choice uh, that is maybe viewed from people on the outside observing may be viewed as a little strange or unorthodox or definitely out of your normal um, you know way of behaving or, or what you normally have been it can also represent you know that you're uh, you know the hanging man is hanging upside down in what appears to be an awkward or uncomfortable position but he's not resisting he's allowing things to play out so for some of you it can represent uh, you know just actually stepping back and watching how things play out because there's this, this internal uh, kind of rethinking something uh, uh, and it can represent that you're, t you're taking a step back or you're, you've made a choice or considering making a choice that other people, maybe that's outside of what you have been investing in or doing day to day or with your life. And other people are going, what are you doing? This is, this is not like you uh, kind of energy. So the hanging man is clarified by the ace of swords. Swords is air energy, uh, which in the tarot usually is about or manifesting. Uh, it's about what goes on up in our heads, our thoughts, ideas, belief systems, perceptions, how we look at things, which affects our words and our ideas, how we look at the world and people and how we communicate and relate. It's uh, truth, education, uh, enlightenment, uh, mental, cerebral, intellectual energy. Aces represent the number ones, promise, potential. So they represent a, the start of something new. I always, uh, my example for aces are seeds, which contain a lot of potential, but of course they need to be planted at the right time in the right kind of environment so that they can grow and manifest their full potential. Otherwise, aces can just, you know, fizzle out as things which are started but never followed up on or never get started. So the ace of swords, so this is perhaps new thoughts, new ideas, an epiphany, the light bulb going off over your head, 
looking at something with a different perspective, a different way of looking and observing at something, ideas, new ideas, you know, kind of like you're in your head going, wow, I, I never, I'm looking at this in a different light or I have an entirely uh, different perspective or new idea about this. And what is this? Well, for a lot of you, again, it's, it's about whatever this card represents for you. Job, work, career path, a project, whatever you do in your day-to-day -day life that kind of keeps your day-to-day -day life going. There's an, a, a shift in perspective, a new idea about it. And this could be a little to other people it could appear to be a little unorthodox what you're considering or perhaps for some of you what you've already decided so next to that we have the fool my favorite card and the two of wands i love the fool my favorite major arcana card the fool is just starting out he's the first major arcana card in the tarot deck he is the zero um, the last major arcana card is the world it shows somebody standing on top of the world and all of the cards in between that are about the fool's journey through life, i.e. our journey through life. All of the things we learn and discover as we grow and mature and evolve until we, we get to the world, we're at the top of the world. So the fool is just starting out. The fool can represent and often does represent doing something that is risky or seen by other people as risky. It's stepping off the well-trodden, well-beaten path in order to uh, achieve something different. Uh, extraordinary results can sometimes uh, extraordinary results come from extraordinary actions or extraordinary efforts. Uh, achieving something, you know, a dream, a desire, maybe something you've thought about for a long time requires sometimes something that feels or is a little risky, stepping off the beaten path to do something different. And that's what the fool is all about uh, and rather unconcerned. Um, the fool is, is often here to remind us that it's really about the journey itself. It's always good to have a destination to set goals and to work towards those. But the Fool is here to remind us that, that uh, the joy and value of life and learning and growing and evolving is what we pick up on the way, on the journey, uh, before we ever reach our destination and goals. So you don't want to go too far off the end of the, the negative end of the spectrum with the Fool. You know, we want to make sure there's water in the pool before we jump. Uh, but it's about, you know, taking a risk, doing something different, uh, something you've never done before, uh, stepping off the beaten path. And for a lot of you, that's going to be about uh, something to do with work, career path, projects, uh, what you do in your day-to-day -day life. And again, these are general readings. If it's not that area of your life, you can always translate this energy to other areas. Relationship, maybe, that could be, you know, doing something different in your relationship life, that maybe dating someone that doesn't fit your usual archetype, something of that sort <clears throat> but I feel like for a lot of you it's in the work project day-to-day -day part of your life and it has to do with where you're going or where you think you're, you want to end up at or maybe where you previously thought you were going to go maybe shifting because the fool is clarified by the two of wands fire energy here uh, and in the tarot the energy of, of wands it's fire energy uh, and, and this can often be about or manifest in areas of our life that's about uh, creativity, uh, art, art, artistic or creative endeavors, career. It's fire energy, so it's forward moving. It's, it's the power of creation. It's always about building and growing and manifesting things. Uh, so it could be an artistic creative thing or it could just be like in the work area of your life or another area of your life. Um, it's about building and growing and manifesting something. The Two of Wands is about what path do you need to take in order to get to whatever your goals or destination is because this man has come to a crossroads. Uh, and we're early on in the path. We're only at the two here. So he's come to the crossroads and he's trying to figure out which way to go, left or right. The key is in, the key that makes this choice more clear or more apparent is in having a pretty good idea of what your long-term vision and goal is, where you want to end up. It's really difficult, if not impossible, to plan for a journey that doesn't really have an end destination in mind. How do you know what kind of clothes to take, how many to take, you know, what kind of currency you're going to need to have, you know. Um, it makes it much easier to plan for that journey, at least reasonably, if you know where you're going. Otherwise, you'll end up wandering all over the place and you may not end up getting anywhere or accomplishing anything. So the two of wands is in looking down the road. It's about making a decision about what path to take based on not what looks really good right here and right now, but what do I really want down the road? And so once you decide that, then it makes it clearer, more clear to know which path to take so that you can start 
um, making decisions and making sure that all of the, t the decisions you make bring you closer and closer towards that goal. So it's about looking down the road at long-term goals. What is your long-term vision? Where do I want to be a year from now, five years from now, 15 years from now? Um, because it, if you if you have different choices and options in front of you, knowing where you want to end up is going to make which one to choose easier. And again, so it might be changing your long-term vision and goals. The Fool is about taking a risk, doing something you haven't done before, stepping off the path. Maybe you're changing radically the way that you want to get to your long-term uh, goals or your vision, your ultimate vision. Uh, or maybe you're changing your ultimate vision or your long-term goals entirely. Maybe you've been working at something for a long time and all of a sudden, or maybe it's been something you've been thinking about for a while, you know. Is this really what I want? Am I really happy doing this? Am I really fulfilled? Maybe it's time to, to go for this, to step off the path entirely and go for this um, or change radically the way that I'm doing things. So there's all this energy kind of going on because you've got these new thoughts and ideas and perspectives in the first half of May or so. Now, the last half of May, it's, it's action. It's moving forward because around the third week or so, uh, time being fluid always, we have a truly powerful combination of cards, Pisces. We have the Chariot and the Magician. This is a really powerful off with a running, the gun goes off, the horse charges off the gate, you're off and running and you have you have everything you need in you to accomplish and manifest whatever it is that you're wanting to do, to grow, uh, to learn. Uh, the Chariot is a card, uh, a very positive, powerful major arcana card of success, of powerful, swift movement that ends in success, but it's success that comes from almost just a refusal to give up, determination, perseverance, uh, knowing where you want to go, having definitive goals, moving on those, not allowing anything to get in your way, to stop you, to slow you down. It can be a card of, of being very ambitious and very driven uh, to accomplishing your goals um, and not allowing anything to get in the way of that and pulling together all the resources you need to make everything f work together in unison and harmony so you can move forward powerfully as this person directing this chariot is doing in order to achieve what you want very powerful card it's like uh, it's like high powered success kind of card but it's success that comes from not slowing down not getting distracted not losing your momentum determination will perseverance you're gonna win simply because you're not gonna give up ever now it's clarified by the magician which is a very powerful card. I mean, it's the perfect one to drive this chariot. This is a card of independent, powerful energy. It's a card that represents that you uh, have put a lot of work and effort into something and now you've reached a point where you now have the tools, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the experience to, to manifest whatever you want because that's where the magician is at. He has a, a lot of road behind him. He's learned through a lot of trial and error and, and, and success and failure and, and victory and defeat. He's learned. Uh, so now he's reached a point in his career because he's a magician. He creates things for his audience. Uh, and he's seen as juggling the primary uh, symbol of each of the four tarot suits, the pentacle, the sword, the wand, the cup. So he's reached a point uh, in, in his craft, in his path, where he has mastered all of these things and, and he can do, he can create and manifest whatever he wants. It's a card about, about and, and it's an, a card of independence too. Um, it, it's a card of needing very little, if any, help from anybody to, to achieve your goals and your dreams and your desires. If the magician does have a challenge uh, and he sometimes does it's sometimes in working with other people because the magician is very independent he's the ultimate entrepreneur he's pretty much has his own way of doing things because he's walked his, his own road and he's always done things his way and that's what works for him and he doesn't always really like to compromise or negotiate so sometimes he has difficulty in working with others uh, but it's definitely a powerful independent self-reliant card and paired with that chariot it's kind of it looks <laughs> Pisces like you're uh, the first half of the month or so um, you know, you've got all this contemplative energy, new ideas. I want to do something different. Maybe I'm trying something different, something new. I'm pulling things together. And then around the middle of the month or so, of course, general readings, the timing could vary quite a bit for you. But it looks like around the middle of the month or so, it's like, boom, 
you're off like like a shot out of a gate because <laughs> I had that vision in my head when I looked at those cards it's you know the horse at the at the starting gate the gun goes off and bam you're off very powerful and it looks like you have everything that you need in order to manifest whatever it is that you want, regardless of how, how nuts or crazy anybody else outside it might be thinking, you know, like, oh my gosh, Pisces, what are you doing? You know, this is not like you. This is, you know, uh, looks like you have what you need anyway. Listen to your intuition. Pay attention to your intuition. Any flashes of insight, your gut instincts, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, your dreams, your intuition over the month of May 2018 in regards to this as well. It's going to serve you well. That's kind of how the month ends with that advice. We have the King of Cups and the High Priestess. I think the King of Cups for the majority of you um, is representing you. It's a water sign uh, showing up as a male but could be female too. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Sun, Moon or Rising or somebody with a lot of water in their natal chart. For some of you it could be another water sign or somebody manifesting as the King of Cups. Uh, the King of Cups is uh, sometimes nicknamed the king of cool too. In other tarot decks he's sometimes depicted as sitting on his throne uh, in the middle of a body of water and all around him the water is you know up and down and wavy and choppy and turbulent but he's sitting on his throne cool calm collected. He Kings and Queens represent individuals who have reached the mastery of their suit meaning they've they've grown and matured and evolved beyond that young childlike uh, uh, immature energy of the page that spontaneous impulsive energy and nature of the night and they've gotten to the top of their suit which means they they're in control and mastery of the character traits inherent to their suit cups is water which is emotions feelings relationship so this is somebody who's very emotionally stable and grounded they're loving and nurturing they're in touch with their feelings but they don't allow their feelings to rule them uh, but people like being around them they're usually able to keep keep their head uh, and make good decisions um, even when uh, everybody else around them is losing their head. Uh, very cool, calm, collected, emotionally grounded, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, being a loving, nurturing, supportive person, they often know the right thing to say. The king of cool, so to speak. Uh, and I feel like most of you, this is manifesting as you. It could also represent somebody else uh, like that who is significant to you in this as well. Now, it's clarified and accompanied by the high priestess, which is where that uh, trusting your intuition, listening to your intuition, your intuitive sense, Intuition is your connection with the divine. It's the cable or the conduit, if you will, through which you get messages, flashes of insight. They may seem random, but they're really not uh, paying attention to dreams, uh, where you feel led. It's not really thoughts and it's not really the, the unreliable emotions. It's deeper than that. Some people call it gut instinct, their higher self, their intuitive sense. Um, but it's about paying attention to that because that's what the high priestess does and she allows that to guide her and to give her clarity and insight insight and wisdom. Uh, she watches and observes everything and takes it all in. She doesn't speak often, but when she does, it's usually quite profound. Uh, so pay attention to your instincts, your intuition, your dreams, flashes of insight uh, during this month. Pisces, it looks like it's going to be potentially a month of changes and new beginnings and maybe quite a big shift in long-term goals and visions uh, or how you're getting to those long-term goals and visions, if not entirely, for some of you, completely leaving the path that you've been on for quite some time in order to achieve something extraordinary by doing something extraordinary. Uh, regardless of how that's interpreted uh, by other people. Uh, trust your own intuition. Allow that to be what guides you. Uh, lots of potentially powerful success moving forward. You have what you need, Pisces, in order to manifest this. Beautiful, powerful, uh, again, I'm just getting this vision of a horse shooting out of the starting gate at a race. So uh, way to go, Pisces. Uh, and it, and it would not be like a typical Piscean energy. So good for you and keep going with it. Don't uh, allow anything to kind of slow you down or get in your way. Of course, we don't want to be so ambitious and overdriven that we run over people. We don't want to do that either. It's still about maintaining a balance. But confidence, assertion, know where you're going and then go. So uh, beautiful reading, Pisces. Thank you for letting me bring it to you. So that pretty much sums up your reading, your general reading from May 2018, Pisces. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it's maybe been, uh, you know, given you some insight or clarification 
are validated something that's already you already have been uh, thinking and feeling again if any of you would like a more personal tailored just for you one-on-one -on -one reading you can get more information in my contact details by either looking at the description bar of all the videos I post or you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage and click on that little about button feel free to email me directly at Maggie the number one McGuire at gmail.com I would be most happy to work with you and set up a personal reading with you live or recorded as quickly as possible and for fast answers to quick uh, those quick easy questions you can also find me on the smartphone app instant go under iris gypsy that's also with my contact details i will see you all again in a couple of weeks pisces for the may 2018 mid-month readings and until then as always i wish you joy peace blessings and a happy life take care pisces and i hope to see you back here again soon Bye bye